I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed. Still got the gang together. Zach has been found. I went and got me a coat because it's cold up here in North Carolina. Is so. it? It's that's balmy why been, here. That's why we've been shooting the ducks, though. It's cold to the north. Yeah, cold to the north. I mean, Thanksgiving oh, week. We are, we're, the, we're in a different flyway, but yeah, maybe there. I don't know, Phil. You said you found a duck one time from Maryland? Yeah, Chesapeake Bay talked that's about Maryland. Yeah, Chesapeake Bay, they, yeah. they banded some ducks. Canvas back. And 13 years later. Before. One particular canvas back, Drake, lit with a, he had a fellow bunch of with him, about 20, about 20 sat down on the water. I raised up, can't kill with one, boom. And we, when we, when I got him in the blind, I noticed he had a little piece, ring of uh, metal on his foot. And, uh. The government put it there. The, 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 the. the the numbers, you couldn't read them. It didn't worn too much. And it kind of had worn down in a one, one spot. I remember oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it was it, so thin, it almost broke off. Almost One more off. year, and he would have lost that. That's made out of aluminum. So I sent it to the state police to see if they could get the number. run it through there and find out what they could put, make out what that number was. Yep. And and they did. And they sent it back, and they said, this was this was 13 years old. Hmm. Is how old this one was. Well, you must have been pretty had a quite a few years into your Christianity to trust sending anything to the state police or have anything to do with the federal authorities. Because well, when so, you were right out of the world, you you weren't so you know. I don't so. mean I was running with officers of the state police. I was running from them. I made a movie about it called The Blind. Yeah, it's The Blind. Look at it. See it. <laughs> We've talked about it here a few times. We've talked about it. I find, I'm thinking, well, I think they mean me. <laughs> I found one. That's just not figured out, Zach. This, hey, we this did. thing was about me. Yeah, I, I looked around and said, what just happened? I mean, whew. What does you know, this mean, the What's blind? crazy is I found one older than that, and I was using a metal detector treasure hunt in a yard in Maryland, and it came out to be a Ross's goose. It was about five inches under the ground. In their front yard, there was no water anywhere near. You think it was a dead? You think it was a dead goose that had just decayed over time, that died there, buried? Probably someone had shot the goose that lived in that house before they were there, is what yeah. I'm guessing. And so I, like an idiot, you know, we're doing the TV shows. I was like, the chances of this happening are one in millions, you know. And so the next week, we were in uh, Mississippi. And Jeff said, come over here, I want to show you something. He dug one up in another yard in Mississippi, Bird Band, and he hasn't sent that one off yet. Oh, he found one of them. Yeah, we both found one in about five states apart. And you had never found one up until that point? No. Well, I mean. They had come off the duck's leg somehow. Yeah, I mean, you know. Could have been a varmint, got the duck, and... Some well, ate it, and then wound know. up there. So, Jace, I, I forgot to tell you this. So, the other night, I watched my first metal detecting show that's not uh, Duck Family Treasure. Well, I appreciate I, that. I just I... happened to be somewhere, and when I turned the TV on, it was on, and so it drew me in. But this guy, you probably know the show, and I I, I can't recall it now, but he he is a diver, and he does all his metal detecting underwater. Yeah, amphibious. Yeah, and so he was uh, he was in somewhere in Florida, and he had a guy with him, and they were trying to find a fishing rod that this guy's buddy or somebody had dropped in the water, but then the guy passed away, and so he's like always wanted to find that thing, so they went out, but they didn't find it. So I thought about your show because it was like they had the whole setup, yeah. and I thought, well, sure, they're going to find it. And the end of the day, I was like, ah. You know, t- too too deep, so <laughs> can't find it. Well, we 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 it. had a couple places we went to that was not what history said it was, and one of them it was a government document that said this was a famous place, and we went no nothing there but beer cans, <laughs> and so uh, you know what we decided was to run it and make you appreciate all the other episodes where we did find a lot of stuff, you know. So that that that's what happens in 
real reality TV. Well, I had a guy I met in Missouri that that I forgot till just now that said to give you a message. Um, he listens to our podcast, and we went and spoke at his church. His name is Tim. But he said that somebody had given him access to hunt a field where in this huge area where back during World War II, you know, they'd set up these places, and so internment camps is what they were. And so I think it was mostly um, Japanese Americans. It was really kind of sad what happened to them because, I mean, they're Americans, but because you were fighting Japan, they took all these people and put them into these huge camps. And so this the place where this is, that camp was there, but now when you look out there, everything was completely removed. So like people lived there for like a year or however long they were there, and then they just totally removed everything. And he said it had never been hunted before, but he said, you have to tell your brother, maybe they can come Well, let's get, let's get an address. Yes, yeah, so I'll work on a, that, Jess. And a I'll, phone number. I'll have my people call your people. We will give you We a, can do lunch. We will well, give and, you and other in other news, a woman drove her and her husband about 200 miles to get to where I was giving a lesson Sunday morning, yep. and she whispered in my ear, you were right about those telephones. <laughs> <laughs> she said, will you baptize me? I said, yeah, I, I, I will. I like the way Dad led in with that. In other breaking news. <laughs> Well, I do. A woman agree with me on cell phone. I do have some breaking news. Uh oh. So the older you get, you have to transition. Maddie, we need a breaking news button now. Now that you've got the cricket one. Breaking news. We need a breaking news button. Work on that, Maddie. Make that happen for when we get to 800 episodes. When you get older, your immediate family grows larger. And so now we're making a transition this year. We're doing Christmas in Nashville. Christmas in Nashville? That sounds my, like a Hallmark movie. Three of my kids live in, Nash, in the Nashville. Yeah, your family now is Tennessee. So I thought about that. Of course, the TV crew, they want to film this. Because mm-hmm. they're like, they got to oh, get it on camera. Chaos. <laughs> You know, you don't have... But the, this may be a Hallmark movie by the time it's... Been. Well, it's... A, what spawned the the whole episode idea is one of the producers happened to overhear a conversation of me and my wife. And look, we love each other. We've been married over 30 years, but we're so different in everything outside of Jesus and our kids that sometimes our relationship is combustible. <laughs> And she wanted to do Christmas in Nashville with the kids. And I was like, great. What are we going to eat? Because <laughs> part of the Cause great. that's the first thing a Robertson would ask. Well, because I'm looking around. Cause Cause we know like, how we eat. It's like you, Al, the other day on a, pod, a couple of podcasts ago, you gave me a gift. You gave me and Phil each yep, one. I did. A homemade cream cheese pecan crumbly crust. Crafted Have lane. you partaken yet? Was it? Is... No, I hate to tell you this, because uh, I have the Langhoffers staying with me this week. Yeah, and you wanted to hide that pie. <laughs> no, they wanted to hide it, and they hid it in the. Yeah, mouth. I ate it one Saturday. Oh, oh yeah. Look, so we ate beans and rice last night. You know, they flew in. I went and picked them up at the airport. I played the game. Two two planes landed within a couple minutes of each other at the Monroe Airport, which caused chaos. Oh, it's streets. it's we're overwhelmed with two planes. I it's, kept it's circling the area because <laughs> every protocol and rule that we're supposed to be following about leaving parked vehicles right out there, they they had the I could tell the people they just said, well, if we all do it. There's only one cop car I said, here. What could he possibly do? And so I strategically moved as close as possible for about 30 minutes just to try to, to get them. And then we, I hauled them all. We ate the beans and rice, and I had that pie. And I just thought, well, the Lord tells you to be <laughs> hospitable. I put that pie out. Did and, they inhale? Oh, <laughs> it was like, where's the other one? I said, nope, that was it. That was the treat. It was a gift from my brother Al. I hope y'all enjoyed it. So well, it Al like, didn't know that his mother didn't know that he had delivered one of those. To you. Do you have any of that pie left? 
to you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, to but, you but, and you only. Miss K you didn't even know we had the pie. Did you not even get and a when piece? When I brought that no. pie up, she looked around there. She said, "Is it in? Is you got it in there?" I said, "Yeah." She said, "Well, will you bring me a piece?" So I went in there. And she said, that has to be the best pie I've ever put my mouth on. Oh, it was good. And, so and what, what's funny what, is. What, what kind of pie was it again now? It was a cream cheese. Cream Al's cheese famous. He's made them for years, tradition. He's not You made the pie. Straw, I mean, cherries. Cherries. Yeah, cherries cherry. uh, coat, coats them. So here's what happens. That So I, I make those for Thanksgiving and Christmas because they're very time intensive. And to make them the way that they turn out perfect. You basically do it over a two-day period because things have to be thawed and softened correctly. People try to – you take the a shortcut. The crust have to kind of set. They got to set. The, the, if you try to take a shortcut with this pie, it's not going to be as good. So I, I take my time. I make it perfect. But Jace and Dad were the fortunate ones because we're going to be gone Thanksgiving, so I won't be making them this year. And But Carly, my oldest granddaughter who turns 18 this week, asked for that pie. And so my thinking on the pie is if I got to make one and set up and do all this work, I might as well make three or four. And so I made three and I gave one to dad and Jace because we were all getting back together for the podcast. Duck season was starting and we're about to be off. And so I'm so giddy and happy I made him a pie. So back to my story, uh, when I said, what are we going to eat? I said, we, you know, we have a tradition if we're going to have Christmas, you know, and we decided we're going to church, the guys are going to treasure hunt and, Missy said, well, we'll cook. How about that? And I was like, well, we need something to carry on the legacy of the Robertson Christmas because we, we cook seafood instead of the normal boring stuff that a lot of people do in the world. <laughs> Sometimes and, duck and dressing. Well, yeah. And I, well, that's she said, well, what do you want? I said, I want one of Miss Kay's crawfish pies. I mean, that's... Ooh. That's dangerous. I, and so that yeah. conversation that the producer overheard, she said, now this is must-watch TV. Can y'all do this again? I said, do what again? I said, have this conversation, because it escalated quickly. Because Missy's like, well, I mean, what do you want, a Christmas miracle? I said, now we're talking. <laughs> yeah. And so you asked so what I want. Everyone is nervous about it, you know. So now it's so Missy is attempting mom's crawfish. Pie. You got to remember, Missy, but she mastered her meat love. So, you know, Missy was here and, and Phil, since you've you know come out and, and shared all, all your dirty laundry on that movie, The Blind, which was about I you will too. go ahead and tell this story. But Missy brought up the infamous story about the Christmas that Kay ruined because. She fried the shrimp too long. <laughs> the shrimp. So blocked. Missy was there. You got to remember from her perspective. She's got PTSD. Yeah, is what she does. Me. It's post traumatic. Yeah. That was twenty five years ago, <laughs> and to this day, she never forgot it. To this day, I said, "Phil, are you ready with the, the shrimp?" I mean, there is not even a, a hint that somebody besides me, because Oswald was the one that said. I don't know what's, what she did to these shrimp, but... No, you said she cooked them too long. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and for uh, 25 years, every time we cook the shrimp, this comes up. So that's why it's... Oh, no. So Missy said, remember that time <laughs> when Kay ruined... Chris? This was part of the conversation the producer heard. And she's like, what are y'all talking about shrimp that was cooked 25 years ago? I was like, yep. My mom, for whatever reason, decided to get the shrimp started. And Phil walked in... While she was cooking, and went, nope. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jace, you and I have been road warriors uh, of of late. You've been filming a TV show. Uh, I've been doing a ton of appearances. Uh, what's the biggest thing you miss when you're on the road? Well, I went twelve days without my Helix bed. Mm-hmm. And actually, I don't even remember getting in it because I was just walking toward it <laughs> and sleep started to come over my body. So I'm sure I had to get in it because I woke up. So you I know you there. got there somehow. Yeah. But now, was... I, we were the same way. And Lisa and I, you know, we judge every hotel by how we feel the next morning, but we never feel as good as we do at our own home with our Helix mattress. They're fantastic. Uh, they offer a 100-night trial 
Um, so, I mean, that's a, almost a third of a year you get to try this thing out, and you're going to love it. Uh, you have a 10- to 15-year warranty uh, to try this out. Um, so you go to their website, helixsleep.com. You're going to take a quiz. That's going to match you up with how you like to sleep, a soft mattress, a medium one, or a firm one, whether you sleep on your side, your back, your stomach. Um, they're going to offer all this to you so you're set up and ready when you get it. And like I said, you get 100 nights to try it. They're offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our unashamed listeners. So go to helixsleep.com slash unashamed. This is their best offer yet. It won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. The Robertson family inhaled 12 pounds of shrimp. It wasn't like they were thrown in the yard. No, it wasn't. They, like they were, were all eaten. Right. But every bite, you could hear Phil saying, too long, <laughs> too long. If you cook shrimp in peanut oil at 400 degrees over one minute, that's too long. Too long. Way too long. So it became funny, and everybody was laughing, but Missy was horrified because she said, I will never... <laughs> cook anything at y'all's Christmas get-togethers. I'm out. So now that she has the crawfish pie that's been ordered, and now her and Jessica are going to do it for the sake of good TV, they're going to try it. Because I, I told the producer, I said, now look, if this doesn't go well, don't panic. And she's like, oh, no, people love to see you climb the mountain, and they love watching the train go off the rails. Yep. I, so, had, I had fried shrimp last night for the woman that works on Miss Kay's health and uh, whatever, you know, they work out, you know, whatever. But uh, I, I've had some big shrimp. Well, I can't believe they endorse frying shrimp, part of the health plan. Well, I think she's talking about the one who helps her by getting her pills together and all that. Yeah, that's what yeah, she, that's Oh, okay. She's I mean, anyway, mom's assistant. But I just walked by, and Miss Kay and I were just, I just took them off the stove eating them, you know. They cook about just minutes, two or three minutes. They're yeah, quick. Yeah. And they were large shrimp. Mm. I just walked by and put about four or five in a bowl there. They were the big shrimp. And I just walked by and handed them back to that girl. I said, try them. She looked up and she said, can I take some of these home with give them to mama? I said, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> well, that was a that was very a nice, nice you feel. Yeah. No, dad's fried shrimp are fantastic. And Jay's too. They both they are. Fried because they don't cook them too long, so they stay super tender. And it's just got the perfect crunch on it. That's what makes it great. Most people, including restaurants, way overcook shrimp. Way overcook them. And so they get they get rubbery, and they're not good. Well, what I was going to say is I think, you know, a lot of people, the bigger your family get, gets, the more days that you have to set aside for Christmas celebration. Uh, no doubt. Yeah. It yeah. become, now, now that I'm traveling hundreds of miles, yep. so I'm not sure. Maybe that's why they give you about a week off, I guess, so. Just for all the celebration. I just never thought that I would be doing that. Well, but here's what's happened to our family. And, you know, and we're blessed because we're all still together and mom and dad are still active. But we've gotten so big because all five of your children now, dad, are patriarchs and matriarchs because we all have grandchildren. And so, except we're up for, about except for 50. Jeff. No, it's 59. Oh, it- 59. 59. We counted it up the other day because we got Phil's 59 with, with all the descendants of, what is that? The, the That's just five dad's kids. five. And, of course, what's happened is because of Jace and Karina and uh, well, we picked up, Willie and. Yeah, uh, we picked up some adoptions and yeah. some acquisitions along the way. <laughs> That's right. But they're all family, of course. And so that's what's put us up to almost 60. And so the next grandchild will push us over to 60. So what happens is it's hard to plan for that many and to house that many people in one Well, place. the last Thanksgiving, I introduced myself to at least 30 people. Well, Thanksgiving. <laughs> at our Thanksgiving meal, there were 30 people that I they had either you know, had a rough couple of years and I didn't recognize them or because oh, I was that guy. <laughs> going around well i'm going around and i have no idea their name oh i know Phil. yeah i'm trying to I, think, I think of a name could be more say, of, well, you know could be what it could that? be more of a robert a robertson trait i uh, hunted beside I, one of our family members this morning <laughs> and i didn't know his name 
So I just called him <laughs> Sadie's man. That's where I was all morning. I said, "Hey, Sadie's man, go do that." <laughs> no, he did do that, which was embarrassing. Well, I remembered his name, but I kept calling the cameraman cameraman because I couldn't remember his. And you didn't know Jersey Joe was actually a Joe. No. Okay. So it was just a complete mess today. That's on, a Roberts. That's a Robertson trait, though. I remember, I remember one year. It's probably been ten years ago. We were at White's Ferry Road, and uh, Uncle Tommy came to church, and he introduced himself to Melissa, and she got so <laughs> mad that he didn't <laughs> he didn't recognize his own niece. Well, Willie That's said for this Thanksgiving we needed name tags, yeah. and I said, "Well, who's going to be in charge of security?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know these Well, for the and just for our audience to know, so in, on Thanksgiving, very we, seldom do just the Robertsons well, meet as a group. So Usually, two things happen on Thanksgiving. Another, it's ex, 40 or 50. it's expanded to our local cousins, but then also mostly Willie. But some people invite other people, and so there may be there's always people there I don't know either. But the fact that we're going to film this, I think, will be interesting. Uh, well, I think the the middle part just watching mom and dad cook it through the years, they don't have a problem with the The biggest trick will be getting the crust right. Cause I mean, that's what makes yeah. it is such is the crust has to be just on. Cause it's completely encased in mom's crust, like her pie crust. That's going to be the trick. Cause that's hard to make. That's hard to do. So really, I mean, it's a cliffhanger. It's a cliffhanger. This I, is, uh, this, I, I can't wait so when, to hear. So when does the, when does the episode air? When, when will this episode, the crawfish pie Christmas? Yeah. Cause it'll I, be I on think the show, they're right? going to off there. I think they're actually, since it's a Christmas episode, I think they're going to, offer it on December 17th on like Fox News on a Sunday night where okay. everybody can watch it. Oh, yeah. So you this is what, it. look, just think how dangerous that movie is. <laughs> they said this year, you know, it's a pretty big network. They're saying for the Christmas, for everyone in the spirit of Christmas, yep, we're going to let the Duck Family <laughs> Treasure guys be in charge of whether we're going to have a good Christmas vibe right. or not. Yeah. So really, I told Missy, I was like, "Look, I mean, it all comes down to you and Joe." Oh, I think y'all will pull it off because let's face it. I mean, what Fox News? They got the Christmas light, the lighting of the Christmas tree, and then Ducey's Christmas treats. I mean, the the bar is low there, Jay. Y'all are going to knock that out of the park. That's going to be good. Even with a crawfish pie debacle, I still think that they'll. You know, so you don't gonna, believe? What are the odds? So Zach, you're saying it's going to be a what? What do you? What's your? Let's all make a prediction. So then we can find out whether we're right. So, so do they pull it off? Is it Robertson? Le- it's got to be pull it off. It's got to be. It doesn't have to be as good as mom's, but it's got to be in the realm of mom's. Yeah. Well, trust me, I'm going to be honest. I know you I would. told him that. I was I like, because if you don't, I'll be eating bad crawfish <laughs> pie the rest of my life. <laughs> so I won't do it. I'll sacrifice it. I would say since it's. Got to be done with all the circus of, that there is in making it. It has been show. filmed. That's true. That it's going to be hard to pull off. So you you think it's better than half chance, Zach, or less that it's quite high quality? I mean, Robertson the, level quality. I mean, I'll be honest with you. It's it's the if it, if it weren't for the meatloaf, I would say not going to happen. But I will say that the meatloaf. Yeah. The last time I was with you guys, Missy made the meatloaf. She pulled it off. And she I did. was. I was shockingly surprised. Let's do it. It was so. I'm kind of like, I think she can do it. If she doesn't, Jace, here's my advice: just remind the viewers the reason for the season. It's about Jesus. Get away from the crawfish pie. Point them back to Jesus. If it doesn't work, you got you have an escape hatch. That's right. I'm I'm shooting for the moon. I'm shooting for they pull it off. It's a it's a Christmas it's Christmas a, miracle. It's a Christmas miracle of sorts supernatural intervention and then we make it about jesus i mean it's hard there's been thousands of episodes about christmas so we'll see if we I, I predict that this will be such a smash success that one day they'll make a movie about it on hallmark the miracle in franklin and it'll be mm. about missy's crawfish pie so what do you think dad will they pull it off are they gonna pull it off well, I, I can't comments. believe y'all are that positive we're very positive and and remind Missy of that, whichever way it goes. That I'm we- not bringing it up again <laughs> until it happens. I'm responsible for. I'd have to have somebody lift it. But <laughs> Dad now can't lift it because it is huge and dressing, and the the pot is just like this. Oh, it's like a deep. washtub. So 
It's about two cooks of cornbread. So it's the end of the year. Uh, a lot of times you reflect, but sometimes you look forward because you're thinking about uh, financial decisions, things you want to try to accomplish next year. Uh, and one of those, of course, you're always thinking about is health care and medical bills. Uh, Lisa and I this year decided we were going to go uh, with a group called Samaritan Ministries uh, because they're part of a Christian community, and we love that. Uh, you have a medical need, you kind of have other people help you pay your bills, and you're helping other people pay theirs. So it's a very biblical concept. It's a Christian idea, and that's why we love it. There's also no networks, which puts you in control of your family's health care. Um, you know what's best for you, so you choose the doctors, hospitals, treatments uh, that you need. You can start uh, health care sharing with Samaritan Ministry the day you complete your membership, uh, even today. If you sign up, it's totally up to you. It's not insurance. It's assurance that you're part of a health care sharing community. It's a biblical solution to health care, and we bear one another's burden, which we love that. And it's also much more affordable, uh, which is why Lisa and I shifted over. So we're part of that Christian community that will be helping you if you sign up and join with us. So whether it's a broken bone, unexpected diagnosis, or other medical emergency, you'll find comfort knowing you're connected to 80,000 Christian households across the nation who stand ready to care for one another spiritually and financially during a time that you need it the most. Become part of this community today at SamaritanMinistries.org slash unashamed. That's SamaritanMinistries.org slash unashamed. Sign up today. Well, we're in Luke 19. All right, Luke 19. We finally got there. Um, Zacchaeus. And Zach, you know, if his, his uh, shortened name, I'm sure, was Zach. Oh, yeah. Don't you think? I've been called Zacchaeus many, 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 many times in my life. Do you remember the words? Have you ever noticed? Well, you're not short. Have you ever (laughs) noticed in the the Gospels, in the Gospels and other places like we read now, Zacchaeus Jones? No, Zacchaeus somebody. No, just Zacchaeus. (laughs) Zacchaeus I just noticed. That sounds like he should be a singer. Peter, what was his last name? Rock. What was Mark's last name? <laughs> we don't know. Any what of was Luke's last name? What was Saul's last name? Back then. Saul of Tarsus. Gone. Yeah. So, yeah. That so was the culture they, they, back then. Yeah. They're representing Jesus, but none of them was called by their they first name. They were all name. single names. Single names. Maybe they didn't. I wonder if I've they often even had wondered surnames. I've why back. that is. Well, it's like, that could it's have like been. Elvis, Prince, Madonna. I mean, Cher, you get to a certain level. Phil. You get to a certain level. Dad's Phil. there. Dad's got it a level yeah. of a single name. Yeah, I, some of they them. They don't say Mr. Robertson. They well, just say Philip. I looked up Philip, but but no Robertson. Yeah. No no last name. All right, I'm on it. I'll look it up. Zacchaeus Jones. I, now, that sounds like that could have been a singer from the 70s. Yeah. Like I Zacchaeus just wondered Jones. why the Almighty didn't. didn't didn't. You know, maybe he didn't want their them to be wor- their lineage to be worshipped. Maybe that was it. Yep. Well, if you had a phone, you could look it up, but <laughs> you don't have a yeah. phone. So is Zach is Zachary is Zach short for Zachary or Zachariah? What's your full name? You really don't know my full name. I don't. Is it Zachary? <laughs> again, again, <laughs> let me introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard anybody call you by your formal name. I don't even know yeah, your I'm middle name. What's your middle name? Zachary? I'm assuming it's Zachary. It's, yeah, it's Zachary. Zachary Dasher. What's your middle name? Michael. Zachary Michael da- I never knew that. Did you yeah. know that, Dad? Zachary. Nope. Zachary Michael Not until Dasher. right now. <laughs> so, well, Phil used to call me Zachary Taylor. Zachary I Taylor. I, yeah. That's why I thought it was yeah. Zachary, because he used to call you Zachary Taylor. Do you remember oh, wow. calling him that? Yeah. No. That's what you called him <laughs> all the time he was young. Zachary Taylor was a from Louisiana. Was a, a president? Was he a yeah, the president? And he he was from, or at least he spent time in Louisiana during the Civil War. I think Zachary Taylor. But you used to call him that when he was yeah. a kid. I remember that. Well, I remember now that in, in, in history. Yeah, exactly where I got that. Yeah, he was part of the Fighting Tigers. I think they called him from down mm-hmm. South Louisiana in the Civil War. Zachary, do you know who you're named after, Zach? I think it was just a cool name back in the late seventies. Now, Michael's and, your dad, right? Isn't your dad's name Michael? Yeah, too? yeah, yeah. 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 See, I know more about you than you think. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, so I'm looking out for you. Well, so, based on my search, I don't think they know. So what I think, but I think Luke 19 
and Luke 15 really go well together. Yeah. I mean, I, my favorite is Luke 15, but I mean, Luke 19, when Jesus says, you know, I came to seek and to save the lost. I mean, that was the reason he told the three parables. It was all based on a situation where he was he was eating with people that religious people did not think he should be eating with. Right. I talked about that in my sermon last week. That that's why I call it the pursuer of all things lost. Because, uh, and I think we talked about this when we studied that text. Zach may have brought this up. That uh, from a uh, Western mindset, we tend to look at it as the lost person, like the lost son. Like, what do we need to do? From an Eastern mindset, it was really all about the pursuer. It was that God was pursuing them, which really is way more in context for what. Well, that sounds sums up Christianity. It does. Me. That's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, because everybody thinks, oh, it's a process. You know, you got to stick to the process. You got to stick to the process. Well, what process was this? I mean, you got a tax collector, Zacchaeus, who had he had uh, taken a lot of people's money dishonestly. He's working for the Roman government. He's hated. And in one act, Jesus yeah. completely transforms his view of money, his life, and and Jesus didn't. It wasn't like he was he went to his house and waited for him to straighten up or come to his senses. He said, "Salvation has come to your house because I'm here." There's something about people because you know if you you you, you go start go down this road. It just occurred to me, by the way, about two or three weeks ago. You know, you'd say. I mean, Abraham Jones, it, it takes takes something away. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Peter Smith. <laughs> Peter Maybe Smith. Maddie can figure this out for us. So let me read this. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead, climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he knew his name. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. I mean, this is probably the first person in years that had ever befriended him. Yep, I agree. All the people saw this and began to mutter, ah, which is my word, mutter. Similar Luke 15, they were muttering when Jesus was eating with the tax collector. Dad, I said this in my sermon. You know, a mutter is under your breath. You're not happy. And I right. told the story about you in New Zealand when you heard the mutter. That's what that was. The yeah. uh, 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 well, why the were they entire, muttering? The entire oh. thousand, about a thousand of them out there, about a thousand of them. They were, they were, it was a sound. Yeah. <laughs> you were sharing Jesus in a public, secular sound. I asked someone there, I said, what, what's that murmur and all of that? He said, they don't like what you're saying. <laughs> I said, about Jesus? He said, that's right. When I got back home and we left New Zealand, somebody had a cell phone. I don't. But they they sent <laughs> via that cell phone. They said we love what you said and it's sorely needed. But the reason we just murmured with the rest of them is we didn't want their reaction. I mean, they, they so were, that was pure. It, that was peer muttering. That's right. Well, it comes from you <laughs> uttering. Mean, it was a murmur. It's yeah. a it's uttering in a mumbling way of dissatisfaction. Yeah, that's right. You combine utter and mumbling. They were telling me, I, you know, I, I, I build duck calls, and I was showing them yeah. how to use duck calls. Right. But from that, I said, well, well I got them in one roof. I'll yeah. just preach the gospel to them. Which is I was shocked that so many started murmuring. But one of them came by while I was there before I left, and he looked in every direction, and he said, we appreciate what you say. <laughs> and then he started walking off real fast. But why was he lowering his voice? He didn't want anybody to hear him. Exactly. He didn't want anybody to hear him. So, hey. I never had run up on that before. I know. It's strange. So the holidays, um, they're a great time to reflect on family traditions. Um, definitely 
you have things you've enjoyed doing on Christmas or Thanksgiving, but it's also about looking to the future for your family as well. Um, one of those things is life insurance, um, to be able to give your family some peace of mind, a safety net that's there to help your family cover expenses while they're getting on their feet. Um, if for some reason you were to leave earlier than you thought you would, it's nice to be able to have that for your family. And one of our sponsors, Policy Genius, helps you compare options from top companies and their team of licensed experts are on hand to talk you through it. So even if your family already has a life insurance policy through work, it may not be enough protection for your family's needs. It may not follow you if you leave your job. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for a million dollars worth of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius knows how valuable your time is, so their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from all the top insurers in America. They have licensed, award winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. It's for parents, caregivers, anyone else who has people that depend on them. So check them out. Your family deserves peace of mind. A life insurance policy through Policy Genius can give it to them. Head to policygenius.com slash Phil or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash Phil. Not to be confused with a mutter when you take a vehicle and find a wet field and drive through it. Yeah, that's a mutter. You're muttering that's through the field. M U D D E D. So then he says they were muttering because he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Which is your link back to 15. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord. I think that was a key word. Yep. Here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor, which is a totally different response than the rich young ruler. And not requested. Just not offered. requested. Right. And if I've cheated anybody, which... He had. <laughs> out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house. That's because Jesus was there. Mm-hmm. Because this man, too, is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Mm -hmm. One thing I was going to say was Luke is the only gospel writer that includes the story of Zacchaeus. Matthew, Mark, nor John mentioned Zacchaeus, so Luke's the only one. And I think there's some reasons behind that. One is, I think, because it's the third one of these encounters before Jesus goes into Jerusalem— I think Luke was definitely wanting to point back to the situation with the rich young ruler and show the antithesis of the way we should be, right? And and also show that money is not the situ the problem. The problem is surrender. And so I think that's why Luke included the story because remember he's writing to Gentiles and I'm sure the Gentiles in the 1st century world were more affluent than the Jewish, you know, People were because a lot of those were independent. They weren't, you know, they were Romans. So I think there's some reasons why he did this. I think Luke's trying to make the point that, look, it's about the surrender and the heart, not necessarily about the idea of money. Because what 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 Luke knew, and he was right, and Jace mentioned this before, is that people would do sermon after sermon after sermon through these texts about money, and it's not about money. It's so much bigger. That's why than I said that. the Bible is about Jesus. Yep. Genesis to Malachi, Jesus is coming. The Son of Man is coming. The Son of David is coming. Help is coming. His name is Jesus. Matthew through John, he's here. The King has come. Yep. He's the Son of God. Acts to the Revelation, he's coming back. He's yep. at the right hand of God. That's right. He's, he's won the battle that we're fighting every day. It's over because he's on the throne. So, I mean, it's about Jesus. Uh, so our crack staff of one, <laughs> Maddie. Maddie. So it was a cultural thing, the names, the last names, because I'm sure people on the edge of their, their seat. So this is good water cooler information. Culturally, during Jesus' lifetime, the Jews didn't use formal surnames to distinguish people from each other. Last names weren't commonplace in the area or culture culture 
what they did do was use names like Jesus, son of Joseph, Jesus, son of Mary, Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, James, son of Zebedee. Yep. They would say the, that or where they were from. Where they were from is yep. the other one. Judas Iscariot, mm-hmm. Mary Magdalene. Saul Magdalene, of Tarsus. Paul, of, there you go. So that's just what they did. So it was either who you belonged to or where you were from. But well, kudos to little Blondie back there. <laughs> Blondie is impressive. She's like a little what? hamster back there. She's, she's a, running she's, in the wheels. She's a, she's a brain. Yeah, she's always working. Or she knows how to look up things on so the internet. So if we wanted to get back to you know New Testament Christianity during the transition from the old you would be Jay son of Phil. Jay son of Phil. Jay <laughs> of Rustin. <laughs> Cuz I was born on the side of the road after they were traveling through Rustin. That's what my mom told me at first for years. We really? pulled over well cuz she was trying <laughs> well, to make she used. was trying to get me to be thankful <laughs> and she's like we pull over on the side of the road and I birthed you and that's you were born in Rustin. So later on, I found out that she was only embellishing for dramatic purposes. She was, because you were born in the same hospital I was. Exactly. <laughs> and Phyllis, by the <laughs> Look way. Look at Zach. <laughs> Zach, you're on mute, but uh, <laughs> we could play this game for a while. Oh, I like. I was saying that's funny. That, that's <laughs> yeah, actually right. really hilarious. Well, that was the relation. Wow. That's the relationship that Mom and Jay's had all through his childhood was just yeah. like that. But they just went not too far back and said the son of. But 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 there's no, not, not much digging into where they came from, what where what they were part of. Just it just no. Wasn't. I mean, it was a culture. Look look. Here's what's amazing about the Bible, is that. The Bible transitions and fits in any culture. Yeah. It's it's crazy how it applies. Just think of having a manuscript. No other book has With done that. All the cultural differences that we're all experiencing, you can figure it out. Yeah. It, yeah. It's amazing. It is. Which tells you what we all know is it has to be of divine origin to be able to do that. Human origin books don't do that. They speak to the the generations they're speaking to in yep. that culture. Yep. And that's pretty much it. A few things may have crossed over, but not many. Well, it just shows you that the major problems of humanity are always the major problems of humanity. That's right. <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. And even despite incredible cultural differences, it still applies. But things mean more. It, it is uh, for everybody. Yeah, when you, when you understand the culture which he was writing, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to our culture because we, we still have the same sin problem. We, we still have the same death problem. Look, we're divided. We still have racism. We still have uh, degrees of power as oh, far yeah. as, you know, even when, you know, like a lot of times the Bible refer to slaves and different things like that. I mean, look, it's unfortunately been a part of our culture since... And, and the beginning culture. of time, That's people right. want to feel like they're better than somebody else, and they've given a variety of reasons to make that case. That's why Jesus really answers all political problems, social problems, economic problems. I mean, all these things, but that's not his thrust. His thrust is, you know, I'll make you a family. I'll give you a purpose, and I'll, I'll take you with me, and we'll live forever. And by the way, we'll also answer all these problems that you have because I'll bring people together instead of, you know, separate. Yeah. And divisions do happen, but it's all revolving around who he is. Right. But you can't say that, that the reason you didn't make it to heaven or the reason you don't have a purpose on life, you can't say it wasn't because Jesus didn't pursue you and it's not that he doesn't love you. Yeah. Wasn't it, isn't it in Ephesians 2 that said the gospel is is the great mystery of bringing together Jew and Gentile, which is everybody? I mean, that that's the exactly. idea from the perspective yep. of God. There was the Jewish people, and then there was everybody else. I mean, last, why is he— Last yeah. name, not needed. Not needed. Now, why is he picking this guy of all the people? And look, this poor fella, I mean, in heaven, which it certainly looks like he will be there, 
he was a victim of the most uh, offensive kid song ever. I mean, that song, you know, Zacchaeus was a wee <laughs> little man. Yeah. I, mean, just I think, was wondering if y'all remember 2, that song. 2,000 years later, they're still singing that. Can you, I mean, do y'all remember the, all the words of it? And Zacchaeus a wee little man was, was he. Little he, man. he climbed wee up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Lord, wanted. And the Lord came walking and said, Zacchaeus. You come, come down, down from that tree. Because <laughs> I'm going to your house today. That's it. That's it. Because I'm going to. Yeah. Now, I don't know how long that song's been around, but I. Why started. not? Why not make the song about the point of it? <laughs> not that he yeah. was we. He climbed a tree, which I do think that he put himself out there. And but I think you think well, break this down for us. What got Zacchaeus's attention is that Jesus didn't hold what he had done against him. He, he loved him in spite of it. He, Zacchaeus overcame the crowd and the embarrassment of it all. I mean, he's, he's up in a tree. It's one thing to be short. It's another thing to be really short, be a tax collector, and then put yourself in a situation where everyone is going to notice. Yeah. And so that, I just think that shows how isolated he was from relationships. He no longer cared what people thought because he had been ridiculed mercilessly. Yep. And here's this celebrity, because he was curious about Jesus because he wanted to see him. He had, he had heard about the miracles. I mean, you're just kind of putting two and two together, but that's what happened. And then here's this famous guy who's actually not, not, throwing haymakers at him, not treating him with, with hate and disgust, but saying, look, I'm going to your house. Because back in their culture, looking at cultural things, when you ate a meal with someone, I mean, that is the greatest friendship that you can yeah. offer. That means you're you're in my life here, where, yeah. where I'm at. You know, I thought it weird that Luke was the only one that included Zacchaeus because I would think Matthew for sure <laughs> would have wanted to put this story into his gospel because he could relate to this guy, right? I mean, Matthew was was Zacchaeus before there was a Zacchaeus. So. I mean, this is true grace. This is true conversion. This is a lightning all, bolt yeah, moment. It, it basically says, "This is this is what you should do: seek and find." Yeah, you, you, but you need to do some seeking. Well, and here's the interesting point about this: this so guy climbing a tree. Little Zacchaeus old. wanted to see Jesus, but Jesus came there to see him too because he knew his name and he told him he's coming to his house. Yep. Now, where does that intel come from? I mean, is that just something he knew because he went there and he said, watch this? Or did somebody say, hey, there's a guy here in this town that is, is seeking? I don't know. I mean, it doesn't say, but he knew who he was. Well, come you just think of the passages. I mean, when he says uh, it, in Second Peter three nine, where the second part where he says God is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish. I mean, this is a perfect example. Yeah, this is not the type of guy that we want on our team. Yeah, a, a modern day tax collector, especially in their culture. But I thought about the one in First John four when it says, "This is love, not that we love God, but that Jesus loved us." Th this process of him going to his house kind of really makes a lot of religions look bad because yeah. most of them say, look, if you work hard and you try hard and you repent, and I, Jesus just showed up, said salvation has shown up because in essence, what Jesus is introducing is how we respond to his grace, his love, his acceptance. And how did he respond? All of a sudden, it completely changed his view of money. You could have tried anything else under the sun, and I guarantee it wouldn't have worked. Yeah. But the love and relationship of the Son of God offered to him and him being open-minded to it. And I think Jesus willing to risk his reputation by going to his house. Yep, that was a big part that's of That's what it. got his attention. Yeah, I mean, the, muttering, the muttering was he went into the house. Remember, this is a culture. You couldn't go into a Gentile's house at all as a Jew. And then they took it a step further in the gray area and said, you can't even go into someone's house who is associating with Gentiles. And this is where Zacchaeus mm -hmm. would have fit into. But instead, Jesus shows you that in this area of gray, he's always going to go to grace. And so he doesn't have a problem going into this house. The verse I was um, mentioning earlier, I wanted to read it, because it really does fit well in this Zacchaeus theme. Ephesians 2.14, For he, Christ himself, is our peace, 
who has made the two one and destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, yep. by abolishing in his flesh the law. And it's still here. Yeah. Still here. Still here. Well, and it's, it's very powerful because this is one of the few conversions where this guy's not desperate. He has worldly wealth. He's doing whatever he wants. You know, they, they attached sexual immorality to tax collectors so much back in their day because they did have that kind of power. Sure. But so, so you get the idea that a lot of the people who were just miracle chasers back in Jesus's day, you know, where were they at when Jesus was being crucified? They weren't acknowledging Jesus as Lord anymore. No. Nope. And so it really shows you a picture of a lot of people want the benefits of what Jesus has to offer without wanting him. Yeah. And in this moment, that really shows you the lengths that God would go to to save us when, you know, to to be humiliated. I mean, it was a picture of his humiliation because I guarantee you when he took off to that tax collector's house, you don't want some murmuring and muttering. That's right. Who do you think you are? I mean, whatever, you, you're a hypocrite is what yeah. you are. There's, and what's interesting is what he doesn't say is, and I'm going to quit collecting taxes. He didn't say that. No. And Jesus didn't ask him to. And that's interesting because from the perspective of the religious hierarchy of the day, he couldn't continue collecting taxes for the Romans and what he was doing and be right. So once again, Jesus never even addressed that. Yeah. He just so, went straight to the heart. So they give me my cheesy yeah. line. It's not about the process. It's about the processor. <laughs> and mm. it's like God's not trying to give you the recipe. Yeah. He, he gave you the chef. It, it's, it always comes to, you know, there is, there is such a thing as salvation. And it's not a plan. It's a man who came to earth. And he executed his plan, but it it's a person. That's why it gets back when people say that about it's about relationships, but they don't really clarify how. But this is the perfect picture of that. Yeah. Now, I like that line of the processor because that makes me think about a computer. You know, and we always talk about dad, especially about how bad they are, but they're just a tool that can be used for good. Or for evil. Well, I've always said I'm a. I don't the focus process. on results. I focus on the journey. But this journey is you following Jesus Christ. That's it. So, I just think we want to hear the ten things that I need to do to you know overcome whatever. Yeah. Well, it starts with a guy named Jesus. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else. You read this story, and it's so profound. It's like, this is why I came right here. And he picked the worst human being that we can think of. Yep. A corrupt, isolated, arrogant guy who's taking money out of, out of good people's pockets. Yep. He's like, I'm going to go eat. Lunch. At they're, your still, house. they're still hanging around last time I checked. That's exactly right. All right, we're out of time. Uh, let's go to overtime. We'll talk a little bit more about this if you want to follow us over at slash unashamed. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.